Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about fabric identification labels, new bag packs that we've added to the shop. I'll be showing some cross stitch Christmas ornaments that I've been working on. Um, I'll be doing a roundup of quilt block of the month programs that are coming out in 2024. Tonight's bag lab is a demonstration of how to get nice flat zipper pocket openings in your foam interfacing and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Uh, I have to edit what I just said about weekly sewing chat. Um, our Social Sunday shows are now once a month, so the first Sunday of the month I'll have to after six years of saying Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat, I'll have to try to edit that in my brain. Um, it'll be once a month on the first Sunday of the month. And as promised, I'll send a newsletter out the day of the show as a reminder in case you like watching live or if you prefer watching the show later on in your week. Um, of course, you can always watch all of the past shows on my YouTube channel. I see Kim's watching, Kathy's watching from Louisiana and Lolam is watching also, um, and Tamara from Chicago. Hey, Tamara. Um, a couple reminders, my usual spam reminder. Uh, if you're watching over on Facebook, um, if, you see, uh, if you receive a private message from what looks like our So Sweetness logo, uh, we don't send communications through private message. So if you do receive one, especially asking for your credit card information, asking you to send money for a prize or asking for any of your other personal information, please do report or block that. And if you're watching over on YouTube and you've left a comment on the show and you see a reply to your comments, again, it usually looks like a copy of our So Sweetness logo, um, sometimes asking for you to call a phone number to give information such as your credit card. Um, please don't give out any of your personal information. Um, please do report and block that. I always announce the winner's name verbally on the show and we've been adding the winner's names um, typed into the description of the show just in case you'd like to double check that. Um, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about I link to in the description so if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. Um, speaking of the newsletter that was sent out earlier today, um, Bronwyn wrote a great write-up in the newsletter about her gardening apron that she made using the pockets from the Oslo Craft Bag. So the Oslo Craft Bag is a free sewing pattern for newsletter subscribers. So if you are a newsletter subscriber and you either never received the pattern or you've misplaced it, feel free to email Bronwyn at Bronwyn at SoSweetness.com and she'll be happy to get you a copy of the Oslo Craft Bag and there's no separate apron pattern. Um, she just used the pockets from the Oslo um, and placed them on fabric um, that she <clears throat> put together for her gardening apron. Also the December challenge is underway on the blog. I've also linked to that in the description. This month's challenge is either to make the goldenrod book cover from Minikin Season 4. I've got my goldenrod right here. This would be a great gift for the holidays, especially if you combine it with um, your recipient's favorite uh, hardcover or paperback book. The second portion of the December challenge is to make a Sew sweet Sweetness project and add some embellishment. So you can either add um, paper piecing, ribbon, embroidery, lace, buttons, any kind of embellishment that you've added to a Sew Sweetness project um, qualifies you for the second part of uh, the December challenge. So you can enter either or, or if you happen to make both the book cover and a separate project using embellishment, you can have two entries for the month of December. You have until December 31st to enter a photograph of your finished project and again, um, the link to my blog post is in the description. All right, so notion of the month is fabric identification labels that we just got in. I thought these were really cool, especially if you purchase 
lots of different fabrics. Maybe you have fabrics, um, maybe you like collecting Kona solids like I do, or maybe you have garment fabrics and other things where you've purchased a different amount, maybe for a particular project, and you would like to have your fabric labeled so in case you don't get to it right away, in future you know what that fabric was originally meant for. So Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera. All right, Danny, if you wouldn't mind zooming in. So this is a roll of approximately 250 of these um, fabric ID labels. So you can either write the labels on the roll first. Oh, I think Danny's zooming in for that. So you can either write the information on the label first before you cut it off. I think personally I find it easier if you cut the label off and attach it to your fabric first. And it's recommended that you attach it to an inconspicuous, inconspicuous area of the fabric, like along the selvage or the top. You certainly don't want to stick it directly in the middle. Um, it's really easy to pull the tape away and I'm just going to use my paper scissors to cut a piece off. Obviously I've already, <laughs> I've already stuck a piece on my fabric and labeled it, but <laughs> it sticks on really easily. I, you can use any pencil or marker that you like. I like using these Micron um, markers. I actually, these are like archival grade markers and I use these for my quilt labels also and they come in different um, thicknesses. So I already had to order this pack a couple times because I missed place where my original markers were. So this is actually a new pack, but um, you can record the information here. I recorded what I purchased this fabric for and then when you're ready to use the fabric, the label just easily peels away and no sticky residue is left on the fabric. So if you're interested in checking these out after the show, these are the fabric identification labels. These are from Kylie and the Machine and I've linked to these in the description. Again, there's approximately 250 labels um, on each roll. All right, so I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, speaking of fabric and storage of fabric, do you pre-wash your fabric? Let me know in the comments. Perhaps you pre-wash it as soon as the fabric arrives. Maybe you wait to pre-wash it until you're ready to use it for a project. Or maybe you don't pre-wash it all at all, depending on what the project is for. Let me know in the comments um, about your pre-washing habits. Okay, I wanted to share my friend Goodwin from GE Designs recently posted a free Advent project on her YouTube channel. So Danny's going to put a picture up on the screen of this particular project. It uses a bit of our cork for embellishments and it's super fast to put together. Um, she goes through how to make the projects on her YouTube channel and I think these would be great for, especially if you're teaching someone that's new to sewing how to make a project. It's still um, a useful and interesting project to make and also very easy or if you need a very last minute gift. I've linked to um, Gudrun's video in the description in case you're interested in checking that out and it uses some raw edge materials which are really fast and easy to add to your project. I also wanted to share, um, I accidentally opened one of my Christmas gifts way early. I didn't realize what I was opening at the time, but I wanted to share this. Uh, Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera. This is some artwork from Charlie Mackesy, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but it's some horse artwork. Actually, there's a, I think it's on Apple Plus. Um, there's an animated short movie that just came out featuring his artwork, but um, this artwork that I got as a Christmas gift says, always remember you matter you're important and you're loved and you bring to this world things no one else can. So I just really love the message. I really love the message in all of his drawings. He also has a companion book featuring this artwork. So um, I've linked to his website in the description. I'm gonna frame this and hang it on the wall, probably in my bedroom, but yay for um, early Christmas gifts. Danny is a big fan of giving Christmas gifts early. He actually told me, I think it was a, was it a Christmas gift, Danny, that you told me the other day that you, you told me what it was already? No, I said, I would not want to give this to you as a Christmas present because oh, I would not right. want to receive 
this type of uh, item as a present. It's funny because he told me what it was and I was like, well, that's for me, that's an awesome Christmas gift. Do you feel comfortable sharing what the gift was, Danny? It's um, an auger to dig six inch and four inch holes. Yeah, that's right up my alley. I've been a couple days ago, I even planted like through the snow, I planted some shrubs. So I feel like for me, that's an awesome Christmas gift. So thank you for my early Christmas gift, Danny. Well, to me, it's almost feels like you give someone a <laughs> vacuum like I don't want a vacuum for Christmas. Yeah, it's handy, but it's not something I truly love personally. I get that because vacuuming's a chore, but like for for me, working outside in the yard is sort of a, one of my hobbies. So I can see where you're coming from, though. Um, all right, we have a lot of new backpacks that we. <laughs> Gretchen says Danny is my people. Speaking of which, let me know in the comments if you like giving Christmas gifts early or if you can't wait to keep a secret for a gift. Because I saw something on Facebook earlier. Um, someone mentioned uh, they like giving Christmas gifts early. Danny's one of those people, so let me know in the comments if you are as well. Oh, before we get over to the backpacks, I wanted to give you plenty of notice. I'll be answering questions live near the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, you can type it in the comments at any time. It can be a sewing related question question about a notion or tool, bag making question, go ahead and type that in the comments whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Danny will be on the lookout for your uh, questions throughout the show and um, he'll be collecting them so that I can answer them near the end. So, um, all right, Danny, if you wouldn't mind switching to the overhead camera. Um, by the way, all of these backpacks are in our shop and I've linked to all of the backpacks in the description, so I'm, I've just been on the lookout for just whimsical, fun fabrics that catch my eye. I know there's a lot of cat lovers out there, so these, I just really love these cartoon cats with these little cat paw prints. All of the backpacks, by the way, are um, a combination of curated fabrics, so I've chosen um, what I like for an exterior and a lining and put them together, and each piece is one yard in the backpacks thought this would be great for either a beach bag or a maybe a cooler something to take over the summer on a picnic and these next three packs are all from the same fabric line but different colorways I thought these were great because these are sort of vintage sewing imagery like um, layout for your pattern tissue this one's got uh, tape measure over here. This is very texty, which I really love text prints. Um, a sewing machine over here. What else is? A whole bunch of stuff. Let's see. Um, supply list for sewing. So I just thought this was great, and this is also sort of a text um, overlay with some some circles with um, text from a sewing pattern. So here's the first colorway. This one's got sort of a white background. I also have it in a charcoal background paired with this fabric. This one's very um, dark in color. And then I've got one blue background with uh, sort of a beige uh, print for the lining. So all three of these are in the shop right now. I couldn't decide which one I liked the best. I almost kind of like the dark one the best. I was gonna say, I'm not a fan of that color palette <laughs> usually. But together, they look really nice. I'm not like an avocado green, orange kind of guy. But with the light blues, it looks pretty nice. Yeah, I agree with you. And also, I kind of go back and forth between the darker one and the lighter one. But then when the blue comes in, I'm like, I like the blue one too. So I don't know. <clears throat> this next one, this one is actually a linen canvas. Again, me with the text prints, and I thought this would be great for lining. This one's quilting cotton. I think, yeah, this is the only one that's canvas in the packs. Oh, I do have one more that's canvas, actually. This would be great for, when I saw this, I was like, this would be great for a chickadee backpack if you were making it for a baby shower gift. This is the fabric that I chose to go with it for the lining. I don't know, this is just really cute, whimsical, love the bright colors. I just love this one. I mean, of course, it doesn't have to be for a baby bag. This one makes me happy also, but 
Could be. All right, another text-ish type of print. I guess either of these could be the exterior and the lining. I guess I originally saw this one as uh, lining fabric to go with this one. <clears throat> one more cat pack. This is actually, I don't know if this shows up on camera, but the gold is actually metallic gold. Same thing on the blue fabric. So this one for the lining. I love this one. It looks really realistic. The cats look pretty realistic in this one, besides, you know, the colors, obviously. And then last but not least, um, hummingbirds with this great lime green crosshatch fabric. Um, these are all on my website right now, and the link to the bag packs are in the description. All right, I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, I've been list, trying to look for some new podcasts recently, so let me know in the comments what your favorite podcast is or what you're currently listening to as far as podcasts go. Let me know in the comments. Uh, my favorite podcast, I listen on Spotify, and at the end of the year they have a, I think they call it, Danny's it called a wrap? Best, yep. Basically yep. your best of your stats of what you listen to in 2023. My favorite podcast is Armchair Expert. There are several episodes a week. I find them really interesting. I do like like true crime type of podcasts also, but those are usually kind of like one season and they're done, that type of thing. Um, but let me know. I'm looking for some new ones to listen to over the month of December. <clears throat> All right, I recently... Got some new cross stitch uh, ornaments in the mail. If you're a longtime viewer of the show, you might be familiar with me mentioning Satsuma Street cross stitch kits. Um, she just came out with four new kits for 2023, so Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. These are the four new kits. This is the one I'm working on right now. <clears throat> it's called Calling Birds, like in the 12 Days of Christmas, that type of thing. I'm almost done with mine, and it is stitched onto actually paper. I'll show you some of my other kits that I just cut out um, in a minute, some of the finished stitch, stitches that I've done. But he's a, here's the three other new kits that I got. My kids like the penguin, so I'm going to make that one next. Um, I did get all four of the new kits just because I have a lot of fun working on these, and I wanted to show you... These are some ornaments that I made from past years that I just cut out today. So I usually make a few before cutting them out and then I glue them on stiff felt. So here's a piece of stiff felt that I did not glue my little cross stitch to yet, but I wanted to show you the back. So this is what, it's a, first off it's available as a pattern and also as a kit. The kit comes with the flo enough floss to make the project. It comes with the, because there's little beads and uh, like sequins. It comes with plenty of sequins to make probably several projects. I always have tons of sequins left. Um, and I actually use, I don't know if you can see inside, there's a little piece of red and white um, floss in here that ties everything together. I actually use that little red and white striped floss for like little um, holders to hang it on the tree. So. I think I've probably made like 15 of these ornaments between, there's there's Halloween ornaments also, so I'm just a fan of working on these in the evening. And because, because it's just paper and you're not needing to hold a hoop, I find it's a, a lot easier on my hands. They don't get stiff when I'm holding the paper. So um, I've linked to Satsuma Street in the description in case you're interested in checking out these little cross stitch kits um, after the show. <clears throat> um, before I get to my roundup of uh, the quilting block of the months for 2024, I wanted to share, I wanted to start sharing uh, fiction books that I've read that I enjoyed in case you would like to um, discover a new book that you can read. So this is a longtime favorite of mine. It's called The Forgotten Garden. This is the cover of the book. The author is Kate Morton. I've probably read this book four or five times. I'm just, I feel like the description of the book is not 
super accurate as far as how amazing the book is. Like from reading the description, I get kind of like a meh. Um, but when I tell you I've read this book four or five times, I really enjoy it a lot. So I've linked to that uh, book, The Forgotten Garden, in the description. And um, all right, let's get to my roundup for, if you're a quilter, some cool block of the month programs that I found that are starting for 2024. <clears throat> all right, Danny's going to put some... Uh, Pictures up on the screen. This first one's from Tula Pink and Sarah Filkey. It's called Big Woods. This features applique, um, and I've linked to all these in the description in case you're interested in checking these out after the show. Um, of course, the whole quilt uses Tula's fabrics. Love the animal theme. I'm not super confident with applique, but I might try that one out. This next one's called Symphony, and it features batiks, and the fabrics come, everything comes in the kit. Um, again, I've linked to that in the description. I really love, I love star blocks. I love the flying geese around the perimeter. Um, yeah, so uh, CAFE has, um, there's a mystery block of the month program also starting for 2024. Actually, there's a few mystery block of the months. This is the first in my list of the mysteries. Um, I think there's several different colorways that you can choose from if you decide to participate in this particular program. This is not a quilt, but definitely falls under the block of the month category. This is uh, featuring Funky Friends stuffed animal patterns and tulip pink fabrics. I actually have a bunch of the Funky Friends patterns in my stash. I love them. I also love seeing them in the tulip pink fabrics. My friend my friend Becca has the Aurora Block of the Month program starting. I love this big feature on the quilt. Um, love the colors. I'm a big fan of using solids and quilts. So um, yeah, this one definitely caught my eye as soon as I saw it. This one is a Kona Block of the Month program featuring blocks in the upcoming um, Kona calendar. Um, and this one is actually available in two different layouts that's the first of the two um, this next one is called Greenhouse Garden from Whole Circle Studio um, featuring some foundation paper piecing I thought this was really interesting I hadn't seen anything like this in the past and I thought it was a cool idea for a block of the month Next up, this block of the month is called Fussy Fuel. Um, this particular example features Melody Miller, Miller fabrics, but the point of the block of the month is um, working through blocks that feature lots of fussy cutting, which you can see is represented here. Next is, um, this one I actually purchased already. The designer is Paula Steele and it's the Signal Quilt Along sorry signal block of the month and these are just different colorway options i chose the one on the bottom the greens with the white background but now i'm kind of thinking maybe i should have chosen the one on the bottom the navy and the orange not sure yet um this is the rome block of the month i purchased this one also in kona solids i just really loved the colors in this one um i like the idea of the different uh rows for the block of the month as this is kind of like a medallion quilt. My friend Goodwin has the London Calling Mystery Block of the Month. This one started, I think at the end of October, but that was not too long ago. So if you're still interested in this one, um, it's not too late to jump in. And I've linked to that one in the description. Another Mystery Block of the Month is from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, link to this one also. This one I believe is using print fabrics. And then there's one more block of the month that I slid in last minute because I forgot that I had seen it on Instagram. One of my friends reminded me. Um, this is the Meadow Quilt Along from Quiet Play using foundation paper piecing. Um, love the imagery, love the hummingbirds, the bees, the leaves. This one's super. So I've linked to all of the quilt block of the months in the description. 
Um, I also wanted to share, I really enjoy reading cookbooks. I know this is not sewing related, but since we're just doing Social Sunday once a month, I decided to pack in as much content as possible. So I chose three cookbooks to share with you that I got in the last few months that I really, really enjoy. Um, again, I've linked to all three of these in the description. Danny's gonna switch to the overhead camera so that I can show you. I just picked one recipe from each one. This one's called Snacking Bakes. Cookies, bars, brownies, cakes. I thought this would be great for the holidays. This is my favorite recipe from the book, chocolate peanut butter brownie cookies. I mean, look at those. Those. I mean, I could eat the, I didn't have my dinner yet because I was getting ready for the show, but I could just gobble those cookies up right now. <laughs> Next one is called, so I purchased several books about um, boards, and this was the best one of the bunch. I like the idea of boards because it's sort of casual, which obviously it says on the cover for ca casual gatherings, and the author is also a food stylist, which you can see from the great photographs in the book, but I thought these were really lovely ideas for Breakfast, appetizers, desserts. I mean, there's tons of great stuff. Um, the dessert ones were all really delicious. There was one that I wanted to share with you. Pavlova's, like a pavlova board. This looked really yummy. So I think I would probably try that one first. And last but not least, um, one of my favorite bloggers, Natasha's Kitchen, recently came out with a cookbook. This is the best recipe in the book. I've made this, most of the recipes are not also on her blog, but this recipe happens to be on her blog as well. I make mine without bacon, but I've made this recipe probably 20 times, especially over the summer when corn is in season, but this one's a real winner and it actually freezes really well also. Um, so I've linked to all three of these cookbooks in the description in case any of them catch your eye or maybe for gift giving for the holidays. Um, all right, Danny, are you ready? Interrupting the show for a special report. Because now it is time for Bag Lab. All right, so my Bag Lab demonstration for today is how to get a flat zipper pocket when you're inserting it into foam interfacing. So I feel like in the past I've always done okay with how the finished zipper pocket looked when inserting it into foam. If you're inserting it into your lining fabric, obviously that's a lot easier because you have less interfacing to deal with, but the foam kind of sometimes makes things look a little puffy or I, I don't know. I feel like mine never looked perfect. I'm not a perfectionist, so I never really cared, but I was working on one of the new patterns a few weeks ago, and I I was really taking my time with this pattern, and I was sort of just playing around with how I was doing things, and I sort of stumbled around. This is super simple, but I thought it would be helpful to you, so I, that's why I wanted to talk about it on tonight's Bag Lab. So Danny's going to switch to the overhead camera. Here's my little sample that uh, didn't end up being part of the finished bag just because I I ended up changing the design, but uh, I thought my zipper pocket looked really, really great, especially this particular fabric um, that I used is canvas. Oh, by the way, this is one of the new bag packs. I didn't talk about it earlier, but this fabric is fantastic. It's got sort of a really dark navy background. I love the print. Um, anyway, back to the demonstration, but um, here's my finished zipper pocket and I'm going to walk you through how what I, what I did um, to get it to look like that. So before the show, I went ahead and cut out my zipper pocket fabric. This is the right side of the fabric. I sewed it to my exterior part of the bag, which my fabric I already attached to the foam interfacing. And I marked and sewed my rectangular box with the line through the middle with the two little Vs. So I sort of skipped ahead just so that I could get to the meat and potatoes part of the process. If you would like to see my full video on how to install a zipper pocket for multiple sizes of bags, 
I've linked to that full length video in the description and I've also linked to my zipper pocket acrylic template which makes um, marking of the zipper pocket fast and easy. Um, but just know that I sort of got this done before the show. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is the next part in the process, which I'm gonna cut, actually need to grab my seam ripper. Let's see. Okay, so I usually use my seam ripper to get an opening started when cutting through both layers of the fabric. And then I'm going to use my scissors the rest of the way. And as I mentioned with all my zipper pocket installations, when you're cutting the V's, cut as far into the corner as you can without cutting into the stitches. Okay, so this part is optional, but I, I find it really goes a long way into getting that really nice flat zipper pocket. So I'm gonna use my scissors and cut away the foam interfacing only. I'm not gonna cut either of those fabrics away. And if you have duckbill scissors at home, you can use duckbill scissors. I'm just gonna use my regular scissors and I'm basically just eyeballing it and cutting the foam away by half. And trimming, what that does is trimming some of that foam away helps the pocket lay nice and flat in addition to what we're going to do next. I'm also going to cut a bit of the foam away from these little V's. So in the past, what I did would do would be to iron this opening nice and flat. And for this demonstration, I'm actually going to skip my iron because what I did when I was playing around with that other zipper pocket is I actually used my Wonder Clips to finger press the fabric away from the opening. Okay, so I just pushed my zipper pocket through. Here's what it looks like from the back side. And I'm gonna take my Wonder Clips and I'm just gonna kind of roll this seam. Danny, would you mind zooming in for just a second? So as you can see, I'm just rolling the seam so that you just see the exterior on the top and the lining on the bottom. And I'm just gonna start attaching some Wonder Clips. So I'm attaching the Wonder Clips every half inch to three quarters of an inch or so. Okay, you can zoom back out, Danny. So the, for this part, the more Wonder Clips, the better, actually. And especially make sure you get one in that little, that little side area. And then just take your time and do a good job. Attach a lot of Wonder Clips because this will help you in just a second when we're gonna get the final flattening. We're actually, I don't use pins an awful lot, but we're gonna use pins for this next step right here. Okay, so I could not find my normal pins that I use. I could only find these little teeny tiny ones. So whatever pins you have in your stash is fine. I'm going to hold this up so I can have the fabric sort of flat just because all my Wonder Clips are sort of getting in the way over here. And approximately an inch away from the opening, I'm just going to attach some pins. And I'm making sure the fabric is nice and flat too from the back side. You can feel um, the underside with your hands. Just make sure it's nice and flat. 
And I'm just going to place some pins every inch or so. And while we're pinning, the Wonder Clips are actually doing a good job of completing the finger pressing. I should mention if you're using a different substrate like vinyl or cork, something where you'll see the holes from the pins, you don't want to use this method if you're using a substrate like that. This is mostly for use with quilting cotton, canvas, fabrics like that. Okay, so once I've got the last pin in, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove all the wonder clips. They only needed to be on there for a couple minutes. And Okay, and the Wonder Clips did a really good job. Everything feels nice and flat. The pins are holding the fabrics away from the opening, which is something that I would sometimes low-key struggle with in the past. And now we're going to attach the zipper. So I'm going to use um, By Annie's Basting Tape. You can also use Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape. And I'm going to just apply the tape the length of the opening. I'm not going to apply My zipper is a lot longer than the opening, so I'm not going to apply it to the whole length of the zipper tape. I'm just going to add the basting tape to the very top edge. And I saw a couple weeks ago in the Facebook group that someone was struggling with either Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape or the basting tape as far as like peeling the paper back. So I just wanted to mention what I usually do is um, like if you have a hair, hair marker or something like that you could use the hair marker, but I just take my fingernail and kind of stab it a little bit in from the side edge, and then it kind of lifts the paper, and then it makes it really easy to pull it back. And usually my fingernails are pretty short, so you don't need to have long fingernails for this. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add the zipper underneath the opening, just like I normally would. You want equal amounts of the zipper tape to be showing on top and bottom. And I'm actually going to leave my zipper head off the end of the fabric for now. I'll move it back before we complete the top stitching. So I'm going to leave my pins in place just where they are. The basting tape is holding the zipper to the lining side of the fabric. And I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew top stitch my rectangular box using a length and stitch length of three millimeters. So I'm just sewing an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the opening. When I get to my corner, I'm going to partially lift my needle up just so that it stops right before the opening where the thread goes through. Then I'm going to lift my presser foot. By doing that, it prevents sort of a diagonal like skip stitch in the corner. Okay, now I'm going to stop and push that zipper head past my presser foot and finish the rest of the box. Okay. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> okay, and then when you your zipper's um, stitched in place, you can go ahead and remove all those pins. I feel like this really, I know this is a super simple tip, but I feel like this really made me stress a lot less over sewing the zipper in and getting it even in the opening. I think it looks a lot nicer than zipper pockets I've done in the past. Not that they were terrible, but I just think that this looks a little bit nicer. And then to finish off the zipper pocket, of course, you'll just go ahead and stitch um, either the sides and the bottom or just the sides, um, making sure not to sew through your um, exterior fabric. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, demonstration how to get a nice flat zipper pocket using foam interfacing. And if you have a suggestion for a future demonstration that you would like to see me talk about during Bag Lab, feel free to email me anytime. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com. Danny's going to put my email address up on the screen. Uh, it's right down there. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to email me. All right. Um, we're going to get to some live questions in just a minute. Before we get over to the questions, I wanted to announce the winner of last month's giveaway. It was actually two winners. Um, Laura Jean Palmer was the first one. Congratulations, Laura Jean. And Tracy N. James was the second winner. So congratulations to Tracy. For the both of you, please email me after the show so that I can get you connected with your prize. And there's also another giveaway at the end of tonight's show. And um, we are still having Danny's picks, picks of the month. So uh, take it away, Danny. All right, before I go to my picks of the month, I had to saw this comment come through early on, and it was Lisa Lewinowski. Can Danny start doing his picks of the weeks on Facebook? My goal in life is for him to choose one of my bags. I don't think I'll do the Facebook picks of the week in the show, but keep your eyes in the picks I did this month, and we'll take this off. Uh, right here. Number one is Angela. She made um, the Enigma pouch with some like NASA decals. I don't know if those are actually done on um, what's that machine, sir? Embroidery machine. I Embroider don't know. Machine? Well, regardless, they're patches. Yeah. Whatever. The patches were awesome. I loved it. Uh, super cool. I love anything space themed, and that that was. I love this pouch. Honestly, <laughs> the Enigma pouch is amazing. Next up. It's going to be Sharon. She made these awesome Sulphic <clears throat> coin purses. I just love the colors, the fun fabric. Um, it just looked like fun. Then next up, Sean. She made the Blazing Star bag, and but she also made a, a Christmas outfit to match the whole thing together. And I, I just loved it. I love the energy. I love the excitement, the smile on her face. It makes me excited about Christmas. And here's the bag itself with the Grinch inside. And that looks like Buddy the Elf fabric, the red fabric. Really cool. Uh, next up, we have Susan. Uh, Sarah, what's this one called? Uh, the Blue Stump Pouch. The Blue Stump Pouch. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved it. I loved the whole display, the look, the, everything about it. Then we have Wilma made the widget. And I love like that sunburst quilting on there. Those little details to me really sets it off. And green's one of my favorite colors. Bright, awesome. <laughs> I love the... Zipper in the back. Really great job, Wilma. Mm -hmm. Looked beautiful. And oh, the last one didn't load. Is there I one just, more? Yeah, I got, I'm going to have to put that one in real fast. Okay. Um, yeah, so Danny will be doing his picks um, every month on the show just because I feel like um, I wasn't sure how to get Danny in on camera just because there's so many things going on that he needs to be behind the controls. Okay, Danny. And the one? last picture is Lisa, our comment earlier. This sh I, I forgot what this pouch was even called. Uh, I grabbed it. it was from 2021. The Windsor was pouch. Blast, Windsor pouch. Blast from the past. <clears throat> I should have known from the lace zipper. But uh, congratulations to you, Lisa. Hope that uh, early uh, Christmas present for you. That's so funny. So it was a coincidence. Uh, no, I went and grabbed it during the show. Oh. And get her. I couldn't find a comment, so I saw 2021's last make, and I got you. Awesome. Great job, everyone. I always love seeing the different uh, choices and fabrics, uh, zipper pulls, zipper tape, everything. So wonderful job. All right. Um, 
one thing I forgot to mention earlier was that I have new patterns coming sometime in January. We haven't decided yet on a release date. All of the patterns have been written. We just need to film the step-by-step -step videos. I will update you when I know of a release date as soon as we know it. Know it. And if you're a newsletter subscriber, I put a sneak peek to all four projects um, in the newsletter. So in case you haven't checked out the newsletter yet, um, be sure to give it a little read just so you can see the sneak peeks of the four new projects. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited for new patterns coming soon. All right, uh, Danny, take it away with the questions. <clears throat> Randy says, have you experienced the screw falling out of the Juki walking foot? I thought I fixed it, but it fell out about five minutes of sewing later. I have not experienced that, but that doesn't sound, I don't like the sound of that, especially if it keeps happening. I don't have a suggestion since it hasn't happened to me, but if anybody that's watching live has a suggestion for Randy about her walking foot, her Juki walking foot, um, let us know in the comments so we can get some answers for Randy. They actually sell a product that's <clears throat> called Threadlocker, and it comes with different colors. Each color determines how difficult it is to let it back itself out. I wouldn't suggest doing it without talking to your Juki dealer and confirming that's something that's okay but it's often used in the automotive industry to prevent screws, bolts from backing out on their own from vibrations and different things. And what's the, what's the product called it's again? It's called Thread Locker. And it's not a glue, right? It's a... I don't... It, it's a product. You put it on one side of the <clears throat> threads and you screw it in and it'll keep... It makes it difficult to unscrew. And the higher... the Whatever color <clears throat> it is, the, the strength. Oh. So you want to look for one that's easier or harder. It depends how you have to okay. change it. But again, like Danny mentioned, make sure you talk to your sewing machine technician or dealer first just don't yeah don't go. try it first then send Danny because a email. walking foot's about a about a hundred dollars depending on the brand so I'm sure the sewing machine's even more yeah <clears throat> uh did you have a nice birthday uh do anything special uh, my birthday was last was it last week it feels so far away already um, I went out to breakfast with one of my friends. I, what else did I do? We went out to dinner. Me, Danny, the kids, my parents, my grandma. We went to this place in Chicago called Chicago Pizza and Oven, Oven Grinder Company. They make these pizzas. They cook them in a bowl. So it's sort of like a deep dish pizza, but like in an individual bowl. And when the waiter or, wait or waitress comes to the table, they flip the bowl over and then there's your little pizza. Um, they also have this great Mediterranean bread that it's like this big and they bring it on this like little plate, uh, which is really fun. It has all these spices on top of it. Um, Danny and my grandma shared a salad and there was still like a whole salad left after they were done eating. And for, if you're familiar with Olive Garden, you know how they sometimes bring those mints um, to your table after you're done eating. Well... This restaurant had something even better than that. They had little slices of honeycomb covered in dark chocolate. Delicious. So yeah, it was a great birthday. I had fun. I had fun all day long. It was a great day. Was there anything else I missed, Danny? I'm trying to think. I played with my dog all day. So like every hour he wanted to do something on my birthday and I obliged. So it was... It was almost like it was Mikey's birthday, too. <laughs> Mikey's birthday is coming up, though. Um, our dog's birthday is on December 10th, so he's going to be two years old. Jennifer said, what was the book club book about the Singer Sewing Machines? It was called The Sewing Machine by... The author's name is escaping me. Um, maybe Danny could look it up really quick. I think it's Natalie Fergie. I think it's coming to me What's now, the, the sewing machine. My number one most favorite sewing-related fiction I've ever read. It was fantastic. Danny's going to look it up really quick for us. Yeah. Um, Natalie Fergie. Natalie Fergie was the author. Thanks, Danny. You'll want to make sure you search by the author because I think there's another book also called The Sewing Machine, but um, that one I haven't read. So you want to look for a book by Natalie Fergie. Karen says, would... 
Sashiko be considered an embellishment for the challenge? Challenge, Yes, uh, for the December challenge, you can use that as well. Um, good question on that one. Um, Suzanne says, was the pink bag in the thumbnail a sneak peek at a new pattern? Uh, Danny, what was the thumbnail? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> I don't think it was a new pattern because I feel like I wasn't ready to show like the whole projects yet, but. Oh, I know what it was. Um, you may put it up. Or no, I know what it was. Uh, can you put it up though? Yeah. Just give me a second. It was actually an old pattern. Um, it was the Polaris bag that I made in Harris Tweed, so like a wool fabric. <clears throat> Danny's going to try to get the picture up really quick. There you go. Thanks, Danny. <clears throat> yep, there it is. Yeah, that's the Polaris bag. It comes in two different shapes, so there's a, in the same pattern, there's a this is the rectangular version, and there's also like an oval size bag, both with a zipper on top. <clears throat> Rachel says, I got a new, um, is it Dungeon and Dragons cookbook? Yes. Dungeon and Dragons cookbook as our anniversary present last month. I collect fantasy themed cookbooks, although my husband is the cook in our house. That sounds super. I have a Harry Potter cookbook. I have a, I think I have a couple Disney cookbooks. I know Disney's not necessarily fantasy, but... Um, that sounds really fun. I like Take that idea. Take a look idea. at her picture. It looks like a parrot's on her head. And a lizard, maybe an iguana that she's holding. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I love that picture. <clears throat> um, Kathy wants to know, is Natasha vegan or vegetarian? That's a good question. She does have, in Natasha's cookbook, she does have recipes with meat. If you're looking for a cookbook that... <clears throat> has a good amount of vegetarian as well as meat dishes check out two peas in their pod um, from memory the wife is a vegetarian and the husband is not so she does cook a lot of vegetarian dishes but she also cooks some with meat for her husband if I'm re remembering correctly um, that one was called two peas in their pod and I've made a lot of her recipes and they're really good Jennifer says, I just love your zipper pocket acrylic template. Such a time saver. I'm so happy that you enjoy using it. Um, it's a good one. We have a lot of acrylic templates in the shop that are for more techniques rather than a specific pattern. And the zipper pocket template is one of them. And Laura says, I have the zipper pocket template and I absolutely love it. It saves me so much time. I think that's probably our, well... I would have to say the seam guide is the number one seller as far as acrylic templates because it's it's useful and it's only four dollars but i would say the zipper pocket pocket acrylic template is probably the number two uh, acrylic seller <clears throat> amy says would duckbill scissors make trimming away the excess foam easier yes uh the duck the duckbill scissors will make that easier when i was trimming the foam back i could not locate mine um but the duckbill the duckbill scissors, what it does, there's like sort of a, instead of having two scissor blades, um, there's still two, but one of them has like sort of a, almost like a metal shield to kind of hold your fabric back while you're cutting. So that would definitely be useful if you can find it, which I could not find mine before the show. Um, Carrie says, would sew tights work in place of pins or would the foam be too thick? That's a good suggestion. So for that demonstration for Bag Lab, you could use the Sew Tights magnetic pins. Um, just be careful when you get it on your sewing machine because the magnetic pins tend to gravitate toward the, the bed of your sewing machine. So especially if you have a lot of them the whole way around, just be careful you remove them in plenty of time um, for uh, stitching this in place. Elaine says, is that wonder tape more narrow than usual? Let me see. I think I have my regular one over here. Um, Danny, if you wouldn't mind switching to the overhead camera uh, and zoom in, please. So here on the left is the by Annie basting tape that I used in the demonstration, and this is Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, so you can see there's uh, 
there's a difference in the thickness. Another difference between these two products is the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape is um, water soluble. So if you wash your bag, then it will um, disintegrate. And um, you also need the heat of your iron to make this stick a little better. And the Biani's Basting Tape is not water soluble, but it does stick better right off the bat and you don't have to use your um, iron for a little bit of extra help. Good question, Elaine. Misty says, I use my stiletto to help pick up the corner of the paper and peel it off. Oh, that's a really good idea for that. Either the wash away wonder tape or the by any basting tape. I hadn't thought about that. I like that idea though. Karen says, just looked up The Forgotten Garden. I read that some years back with Book Club and I absolutely loved it, a wonderful book. Thanks so much for the feedback on that, Karen. Yeah, it's a really great, I tend to read really, really good books multiple times every few years and that's definitely one of them. Cherry says, are you doing any English paper piecing? I'm thinking about giving it a try. I would highly recommend, especially if you're new at English paper piecing, um, I haven't made this project yet, but it just looking at it, it looks like it's not super difficult. Tula Pink has her brand new English paper piecing pattern and kit through paper pieces. It's called Tumbling Cosmos. Um, check that out. Um, I really love the colors and the design. Um, and if you are interested in trying English paper piecing, um, yeah, check that one out. Joyce says, I forgot to top stitch one of the zippers on the Metro double zip pouch. Will that create an issue later? Um, usually not. Um, definitely, I will say the top stitching on the zippers definitely holds the lining fabric away from the zipper. But in a lot of cases, I, I wouldn't necessarily expect the lining to like jump up and get caught in the zipper teeth. I guess it's a possibility Top stitching in that particular pattern especially is more to make everything look nice and flat and finished, but um, definitely I would not consider that a disaster if you skipped the top stitching in that one instance. Janet says, um, what's your favorite sewing machine? I love my Juki TL QVP18. I actually have a video on that sewing machine on my YouTube channel in case you're checking it out. I think it's a 20 or 30 minute video so it's a substantial video I talk about all the features of the machine I sew through a lot of layers and cork and foam interfacing so if you haven't seen it yet go ahead and find that on my youtube channel um, Irene says is there a template for one eighths of an inch uh, tassel other than the paper oh that's a good question so I have a free video on my website and YouTube channel for making a cork tassel. I actually only have the paper template. We never came out with a acrylic template for that one, unfortunately. Margie says, there was an issue with the juking walking foot with the arm bending. Um, they will replace it for free. I'm assuming that was a comment, perhaps, Danny? Yeah, I think about the screw. Oh, okay. Um, thanks for mentioning that, Margie. I'm assuming you should check with your dealer that you purchased the machine from. Are you calling in on the questions, Danny? All right, I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I will be back again next Sunday, not next Sunday, next month on the first Sunday of the month. Um, so our next social Sunday show will be Sunday, January 7th, same time as usual, 7 p.m. Central Time. And as always, you can always watch um, the recordings of the show on my YouTube channel. One last thing to get to for tonight is the giveaway. So for the giveaway for tonight, I decided to draw two live winners and two winners as we normally do. You have a week to enter uh, the giveaway. So the giveaways are randomly drawn. For the two non-live -li non winners, you have until the end of the day this Saturday to leave a comment on the show wherever you watch, either on Facebook or YouTube. We add all the comments together, and I will announce the winners on next Sunday's show. Um, since we have two live winners, though, those winners will know uh, before the end of tonight's show. So, um, Danny, give me some numbers to pick from so that we can get our two live winners. 1 through 76. Um, 1 through 76, I'm going to pick 44. 
One third twenty. Um, three. All right. So first live winner, Jenny. Leave that on the screen for one second, so I could write that down. Judy Ellers O'Rear is our first live winner. And thank you for your lovely comment, Julie. Uh, you have been missed, but I totally understand once a month shows, something to look forward to. I appreciate you, Julie. Thank you so much. Um, the prize for this month's show is my upcoming new four-pack video bundle. That'll be the four new patterns with the four videos. Obviously, they're not ready yet, so you will get yours first um, as your prize as soon as that comes out. But Please do email me after the show so that I can get you on my list for your free bundle. And second live winner, Danny? One through 79. <clears throat> Actually, uh, one through 89. Uh, let's go with four. Yep. And 10. Three, six, <clears throat> three, six, nine, 10. All right, our second live winner is Naomi Hintz. Congratulations, Naomi. Have a Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, for both of the live winners, please email me tonight after the show. Danny's going to put my email address up on the screen one more time. Um, it's Sarah at SoSweetness.com. And don't forget, there's two more chances to win just by leaving a comment on the show. Those will be, you have a week to enter for that. I have a an extra question for you that you can answer in the comments for an extra method of entry. And my question is, what is the best gift you have been given ever? Maybe someone made you a quilt. Maybe you got a new sewing machine. Let me know in the comments. Um, what's the best gift you have ever been given? Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I really appreciate you sticking with me, especially since we've changed to our once a month social sunday shows and again the next show will be on sunday january 7th i hope you have a fantastic december happy new year and i'll see you again on january 7th bye everybody 2024